8.1 Exploring the Logarithmic Function. So this is the last chapter in the textbook, it is, but is often um, taught earlier by some other school. So I'm going to jump into that now if you've been following along and you thought I've missed a few chapters. I have, but I will come back to trig soon. Okay, so exploring the logarithmic function, um, this section is about graphing it and how do you graph a logarithmic function? You've probably seen logarithms before. Um, maybe your teacher showed you them in grade 11 to help some, some solve some of those pesky exponential function word problems. But we're going to take a look first at the graph of the exponential function, and then I'm going to show you how easy it is to find the graph of the logarithmic function. So recall your exponent laws. Um, if you don't remember them, you might want to do a little review of those. I think in the getting ready section of this chapter, there are some, some questions that you can practice on. So remember that two to the negative power, two to the negative two here would be two squared and the negative means one over it. Um, also in the grade 11 curriculum, if you go back in, in some of my lessons, you can find some work with um, exponents. Okay, so two to the negative two is one quarter. It doesn't make it a negative number. The negative just means one over your answer. So two to the power of one and one over that gives me a half. Two to the power of zero, where anything to the power of zero is one. Two to the power of one is two. Two squared, four, two cubed, eight. Okay, so these would be the points, the coordinates that I would use to graph the exponential function. Now I think if you recall, um, the exponential function has a horizontal asymptote and that horizontal asymptote happens to be the line x equals zero. So it goes like this, right? Never goes below there. Uh, let's sketch this quickly. One is two, two is four, and three goes up to eight. So here's my exponential function. This would be the function y equals Two to the x. So the logarithmic function happens to be the um, the inverse of the exponential function. And if you recall that inverses are ref reflections about the line y equals x. So in order to find the logarithmic function, all you need to do is reverse these coordinates. So instead of minus two and one quarter, you'd have a quarter and minus two, and so on. Now, this is really important when you're trying to uh, do transformations of these functions, and I will re re, um, reiterate that point later when I get to that section, because you want to be able to, uh, can't, can't talk and write at the same time, obviously. You want to be able to find the exponential function points first, so then you can just flip them and then apply the transformations. And I'll be doing that in the next lesson. Okay, so the logarithmic function, you can see the it, it's going to have an asymptote of y equals zero. So this is going to be y equals zero, and my function is going to be on this side now. So I have x is a quarter and minus two, and then a half and minus one, 1 and 0, so the x-intercept, the y-intercept for the exponential is 1, and the x-intercept for the logarithmic function is 1. So 2 and 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2, and 8 and 3. We'll just sketch it like this. So you can see that it is a reflection about this line. Now note that it does not cross a vertical asymptote. You never cross vertical asymptotes. You can cross horizontal ones, but it doesn't apply to these. Now you do, you should also remember that you can't have a base that is a negative number. Maybe you recall from grade 11, they said, well, let's say this was minus two. So you'd have to have it in brackets, right? Minus two to the power of one would be negative. And then if you squared it, it would then be positive. So you'd have points all over the place. So exponential functions, the base has to be positive. Okay, so there's your, this is y equals log base 2 x. Now it's also important that you see what happens when the base is between 0 and 1. In this case, I'm going to do a half to the power of x. 
So a half to the minus 3 is a half cubed and 1 over it. In other words, you can flip this and then just cube it. So that would be 8 and 4 and 2 and 0 and a half, a quarter, and 1 eighth. So that's my exponential function. Now you probably remember these were uh, 2 to the power of x would be considered a growth function and anything between 0 and 1 would be considered a decay function. And that is because as you, if you go to sketch this, you can see that it is decreasing for all values of x. Um, where am I at here? Looks like I put in some crazy numbers here. Minus 1. This should be 1 here. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, so I have 0 and 1. It has to go through here. And then I have 1 and a half, 2 and a quarter, 3 and an eighth. So this function is coming down like this. And again, it has a horizontal asymptote. And so the horizontal asymptote for the exponential function is y equals 0. Okay, so now a reflection about this line. So we're going to put in our line. This is the line y equals x, as you might remember. So this is y equals a half to the x. And this other function, if we want to know the points on it, all we have to do is switch them again. How easy is that? Okay, so remember that if you're doing a transformation, you're going to want to find the exponential points first, flip it to get the logarithmic points, and then finally apply the transformations. Okay, so let's put this on here quickly. So we have um, 8 and minus 3. Mm, no, no, no. 8 and minus 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't really have that on here. Let's forget that one. So 4 and minus 2. Mm, 2 and minus 1. 1 and 0. A half and 1. A quarter and 2. An 8 and 3. So it's coming down like this. Oops like that. And again this time I should have maybe changed the color of your asymptote here. So this is the asymptote for the logarithmic function y equals 0. Okay so that's what they look like. It's not um, really that difficult to figure those out. There are some points that you should remember though. The base or b is always positive and I, I explained that to you why it can't be chicken all over the place. The x-intercept is 1. So this is for logarithmic functions, right? The exponentials are the other way around. Logarithmic. So the exponential function, the y-intercept is 1, but you're flipping it, you're changing position, so the x-intercept is always 1. The y-axis is the vertical asymptote. Um, the domain is x is an element of real numbers. x is greater than 0, because you see all my... my um, Logarithmic functions are on this side of the graph. And that's also very important when you're solving logarithmic functions. You can't take the log of a negative number, so that it's going to um, have some values that might be inadmissible when you're doing some solving of equations, which we will be doing soon. Okay, why is an element of real numbers? Yes, it goes all the way up here, goes all the way down, 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 down. The function is increasing if the base is greater than 1. That's this graph up here, right? It was increasing as we go from left to right. It's getting higher. And when B is a fraction, it is decreasing. So it's coming down. Okay, in this section, just a couple of other little things that they do. One is um, they ask you to solve some equations. Log base 327, what is your answer? So what you're asking yourself is what number... Do I raise do I raise 3 to to get 27? In other words, 3 to what number is equal to 27? I'm going to erase what I just wrote here because I don't want you to think I made an equal sign to this. 
So 3 to what number is 27? And you'd say 3. So x is equal to 3. So the answer to this, 3 to what power gives me 27? Your answer is 3. I'll just put a little box around that because we did so much other work here. Okay, this question says, what do I raise 2 to to get 4? Well, that's really easy. 2. 2 squared is 4. What do I raise 4 to to get 64? Might be a little more challenging. 4, 16, 64. That's 3. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. What do I raise 3 to to get the root of 3? Well, that might be easier if you wrote it like this. Log base 3 of 3 to the half. And there's your answer right here. What do I raise 3 to to get 3 to the half? Your answer is a half. What do I raise 5 to to get 1? Well, anything to the power of 0 is 1. I always like zeros. And I just wanted to show you another way of solving these ones. Let's say it was a really difficult one and you didn't know the answer. So if you don't know it off the top of your head, there is something called the change of base formula where you can write it as the log of 64. Now I've changed the base, you see, this is the um, log base 4. And if I write it as log, that means base 10. If you don't have a number here, it's always base 10. So if I do that over log of 4, and I'll prove this to you later on. I just don't want to do it right now because it's not that significant for this exercise. So if I do log of 64, let's clear this. Oops. So if I do log of 64, make sure you use brackets, divided by log of 4, I get 3. I don't know if you can see that on here. It doesn't show up so well for me. So that's another way of solving these ones if you don't know the answer off the top of your head. Or you can always put it in your calculator and say 4 to the power of 2, 4 to the power of 3, and there you go. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to logarithmic functions, how you get them, how do you graph them, and um, the next section I'll do some transformations with you.